Good afternoon, Lions. Nice to have such a resounding acclamation. Lions Shirley, would you please stand? Lions Shirley led by example. I was, I've been looking for people who aren't showing spirit, and I see a few of you around. And her quarter was laying on the table waiting for me. So if you're not dressed in nice paraphernalia today, get your quarter out. If you're a new member and your sponsor did not tell you, give me a quarter anyway and you have my permission to try to extract it from your sponsor. Thank you, Art Shirley. Are there any happy dollars? All right, Lion Dwayne. Two dollar bill. Okay, Lion, I'll be calling. I guess I have a happy two dollars because I got the line on the bottom board. Along with Kempo Terrell. So, uh, can we order the buck? Any other happy dollars? Why have passed the president Patrick? <laughs> president Ron, fellow Lions guests, obviously Lions, uh, President Ron and I got the dress memo for today. <clears throat> yeah, except for I wore my white tennis shoes and you wore your black ones. At any rate, uh, two, only two happy bucks today. These are kind of gray brown. Yeah, those are white. Yeah. Okay. Uh, First one is uh, kind of a notification dollar. Uh, my business, Copies Today, will be moving back to Portland and Catlin Street, so my ability to do a whole lot of stuff during the month of March is going to be a little difficult for our lives. But uh, the other part of it is, is that I have been invited by friends, like Classic and I, Kiwanis, of all places, I had been invited last November, and unfortunately I remembered it the you know, day before yesterday when it came up on my calendar, to go and talk to them about the great work that Pioneer Lions does in the community in the area because they would like to steal some of our secrets. And so we'll be talking to them tonight on behalf of you all. We are honored to have you represent us, Pat. Oh, boy. <laughs> Would, would they, would they uh, possibly steal a past president? Oh, okay. Past President Cindy. President Ron, fellow Lions and guests. One, I have a happy dollar to be back. I think I'm on the final stages of getting rid of this crud that's been going around. Also, a happy dollar, our shop is getting repaired as we speak. We're now working on week two of fixing the damages from the tornado. Ah, oh, Lion Kid has a happy dollar. Well, I guess it's a happy dollar. I don't know. We'll see. King Lion Ron, fellow Lions of Guest, I have a happy dollar for something that you told me I owed a dollar for. You were Lion of the Mud. And, uh, and you were recognized particularly for your memory. Right. How are you doing, Mike? Past District Governor Stebo. Thank you, uh, esteemed low-life tail twister Phil. President Ron, lines and guests, I do have a happy dollar today. Got a visit from our youngest son, wife, and two of the grandchildren. And we had purchased a new computer the week before, but when we turned it on, we couldn't get internet service, so we didn't know what to do. So I told him about it. He sits down, and two minutes later, it's going. So. <laughs> he turned it on. Pass over, Chair George. Ah, he's got his quarter. President Ron Bell, eyes and guests. I'm just happy. I love this nice weather we're having. Yes, it's very special. Oh, 
Oh, you're baby. President Ron, fellow Alliance and guests, I have a happy dollar. I went to the beach. It was beautiful weather down there. It was colder than but it was sunshiny. We had a good time. If she doesn't show Good time okay. to see you go wherever you do, Shirley. Excuse me, baby. Speaking of good times, pass on Chair Gray. President of the Lions and Guests. Happy Bob. Last week I uh, took time, went over to uh, Frontier, and uh, had a nice visit with Jackie Bird. Those of you that remember Jackie, to say hi, and she says if she makes it into April, she will be 90 years old. Oh, wow. 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 Working our way over here past President Jim, he of the hair. Well, I'm President Ron, Ron fellow Lions and guests. I'm giving $12, I've been gone for a while. Uh, I had the worst cold possible, and so I suffered through that, and so that was a couple of meetings to explain, and then there was one when I had a, a, a medical procedure, uh, they, it was from a proctologist, they called it the Reineke Special. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they come up with these terms at the hospital, but... You know, that's why you have all that hair on your head now? That must be. Yeah, they, they took it from another part of my body. Uh, as, as you all know, Jim is retired from the Navy, and the uh, procedure began with the term up periscope. <laughs> Pass this to Governor Mark. <laughs> President Ron, fellow Lions, yes, that was quite a one to follow. Uh, first happy dollar is I am batching it for the next three days. My wife had an opportunity to go down with a couple of her sisters, a fancy estate in the wine country where there's going to be lots of wine and shopping, and my wallet's going to be a little bit shorter. But she, uh, she needs a break with everything going on with her mother's nice to see her get away. Second dollar is a birthday dollar. I have one of those uh, rolling around this coming Saturday, and I will spend it like I enjoy spending my days. I will be teaching a couple of courses at the Lions Learning Institute down in uh, the center on Saturday, so looking forward to that. Why are you looking at me when you say that? Is there something I have to, oh, okay. Apparently I have something to learn. Uh, by the way, uh, Lion Mark, I understand you gave beer up for Lent. Apparently that didn't cover your wife, too. <laughs> okay, yeah, but the wine. Oh, the wine looky here. Wine. Yeah, a quarter. Thank you. We'll save the best for last. <laughs> Past District Governor Jim. King Land Ron. Fellow Land. Yeah. Scumbag tail twister. Uh, very happy dollar uh, to be here. Uh, I checked the obituaries this morning and found I could be here today, and I'm very, very happy about that. And somebody over there told me that uh, if, if he looks up and uh, he sees the top of the grass, he feels better than when he, if, if he should look up and see roots. <laughs> Past President Bob. King Lion Ron, fellow Lions and guests, I have several. Uh, one of these dollars is kind of an unhappy one in the way. While browsing through the produce section at Winkle, not specifically in the broccoli section, I ran into uh, Sam Wardy. He informed me that uh, <laughs> he wouldn't be here today and that uh, he gave me a dollar to tell him, people, I'm unhappy he's going to be in how he meant to be. The other dollar just, uh, I'm just happy. Why in wall? Very, very 
Yeah, I'm very Those are the ladies who tried to shoot it. Hey, Lion, Ron, fellow Lions and guests, uh, I think that Marie and I are sorry that we haven't been here for the last couple of three weeks, but we did have a wonderful time. We just time did the tickets up here. So I bring the machine up here. Yeah. Well, that way, give it to Russ. I must go out when they sent me the invitation. Past <laughs> President Frank and future governor of the state of Oregon. Oh. Yes, uh, it's nice to welcome you to the Pioneer Alliance. I do want to remind you, by the way, that unofficial meetings are not allowed during the tail twister time. Yeah. So when you won't have your head together and your mouth's going, uh, you'll get fine next time. I, I, yeah. Did he bring his coffee wine with him? Lion Tom. Same to me. <laughs> That's no fun. Yeah. It's nice to be back here. I've been gone for King Lions, whatever his name is. Um, on. And Fellow Lions again. It is a pleasure to be back today after being gone for a couple months. And I'm still on oxygen, and but I'm getting better. And my wife will let me out of the apartment once in a while now. <laughs> And that's nice when you haven't been able to move out of a room for months and months and months. And anyway, let me tell you, uh, my grandson came down this weekend. He lives in the Copa now and goes to Curtis High School and uh, wrestles and uh, one of the three or four sports he's, he's involved with. Anyway, my wife said to him last year, I mean, earlier in the year that she would give him two dollars for each pin that he did. So she gave him a check for fifty-two dollars last week. So he's he's done pretty well. He went to state, didn't do well at state, but he won the won the district and uh, won a couple other tournaments. And we're real proud of him, and he's a smart kid. So other than that, I sat in my apartment waiting for Ron Shopper to call and ask me if I needed a ride today because Pontius had already told me he was going to come pick me up. If a Shopper to call, I'd said, no, I don't need a ride today, and then I'd, I'd show it up and got him. <laughs> I, I wasn't aware that happy dollars were on sale today, but apparently they are. Uh, Lion Bill. King Lion, Ron, Crow Lions and Guests. Uh, this is Spirit Day, so I would like to have you all give me a C. C. And then I would like to have you give me an E. E. And then a P. P. What does that stand for? Club Evaluation Program, which you've all been taking care of. Thank you very much for turning in your forms. While I'm walking, I have two happy dollars. I was invited to sit in as a guest at the Pacific Northwest Poker Association <laughs> event last Saturday, and I have two happy dollars from that. First of all, I walked away with some, some retirement funds of somebody else. And number two happy dollar is because something during the night uh, caught me so funny that I had one of those clear from the toenails belly laughs. And at the time, I couldn't remember what was funny, and I can't remember that yet either, but it really, really is good to laugh like that. Why, well, Pat? <laughs> President Ron, fellow lines to guess. This is going to be a sad dollar at first, but it turned out to be a happy dollar. Yesterday, I was changing the light bulb in a little lamp by my computer. I didn't take the lamp shade off, thanks my husband reminded me I should have. Anyway, it shorted out. I lost my computer, my printer, my uh, monitor. Everything was gone. It turned out it was the surge protector. So I had to buy a new one, but everything's back running up. <laughs> and, uh, 
Ironically, so is Lloyd. <laughs> Any other happy dollars from the floor? Moving to the head table. Slowly moving to the head table. Slowly turn. Blinding. Lyra Russ. Second VP. Thank you. President. Ron. Ron. <laughs> Fellow Lions and Gets. That was a happy dollar, and I don't know what it was for, but I'm happy. That's it? No, I guess actually I wanted to just say that we've got about 45 to 50 of these CEPs, so we're, it, we're going in a positive direction, and hopefully we will continue. And I appreciate your help on that. Mr. President Ron. Oh, Julie. Julie has a dollar. I'm just happy to see so many familiar faces today. All right. Well, I can't get this meeting started till we find the gavel. Phil got it from me. Get this meeting started. Larry Hansen, will you lead us in the uh, invocation? Our Heavenly Father, we do come before you with thanks and praise for the opportunity of being alive, for the opportunity of being in service to our community and to the world wide. May we never forget our uh, purpose and calling to serve those, help those that are blind or might become blind, and may continue to see the beauties of all your creation. We thank you, Lord, again for the food given to us, the strength of us, the calling to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sarah, will you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carolyn, will you lead us in the song? Country is a deep, sweet land of liberty, of the I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride. From every mountain side, let freedom ring. <laughs> Do we have a sunshine report? Uh, yeah, in a minute. Lion Tamers, do we have any guests? Yes, we do. We have one. His name is Frank Wiley. From After this meeting, we're going to have a special uh, board meeting up here by the banners. A uh, Greg Firth has an announcement. He's leaving us. He's leaving us. <laughs> we hope. Um, stay home. <laughs> yeah. President Ron Paul, I am a guest. Uh, last week I was in uh, 
Lions building going through the, uh, what do you call it, uh, oh, well, health card. Garbage card? I'm going to read off real quickly the ones that I've got health cards for, the rest of you I need health cards from. The ones that are okay right now, George Moore, Walt Marie Speck, Sandy Cat, Harold Malone, Dan Gurdon, Vicki Wellenbrock, Sharon Sisson, Ron Johnson, Phil, Phil Olson, and Lori Yoder. Now, one's coming up for expiring in the next few months. In the next few months, got Darlene uh, Mungin, uh, Cindy Pickett, me. Patterson just got a new car, Dan Twist, Cindy Sessions, Rex Boswell, Leroy Parcell, Marilyn Patterson, and Steve Johnson just got a new card. Now, if you have cards and they're not on my list, make me a copy, please. If you don't have cards, see me and I'll let you know where you can get your testing. And you can do it online. Thank George you. Moore has an announcement. George Moore. President Ramont, the Alliance of Guests. Visitations, we got one this Thursday night, Castle Rock. We'll leave the Kelsall Park and Ride about 10 after 5. Uh, next Tuesday night, we're going to visit Orchard Evergreen. Leave Columbia Ford about 5.30. And on Thursday the 19th, we're going to go to the Center. And we'll leave Columbia Ford at 5.45 p.m. Also, right after this meeting, right over in this corner, I need a very short meeting of all of you that have Melvin Jones. Steve, We're going to start Steve. selecting one for this year, so right after, be very short. Cindy Fickett has an announcement. Harvey's got an announcement. <laughs> President Ron, <coughs> fellow Lions and yes, button time. <laughs> and Baggy's a 5, 10, 20, and a 75er. Thank you. Doug Harvey has an announcement. President Ron, fellow lines of guests, I want to make an announcement for all the past presidents. There will be a past president's meeting a week from this Wednesday night at the 11th. It will be at Terry's Restaurant on Ocean Beach. Terry's Restaurant is a former of Parker's, right at the corner of 32nd Ocean Beach, next to the railroad tracks. We'll meet there next Wednesday night, the 11th at 6 p.m. Be upstairs. There's an elevator for those of you that want to climb stairs. I'll make an announcement again next week. For the past president's only. Thank you. Harold Malone has an announcement. President Ron, fellow Lions and guests, it's about that time of year to start preparing to take the little white ball and bat it around the pasture. Uh, I do have a proposal that has arisen that it would affect all the different players that want to play. So right after the meeting over here, would you players just join me for just a very few minutes here? Not very much time at all. Thank you. Which meeting should be first? Yeah. 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 Ye
Ron Stoffler has an announcement. President Ron, fellow lines and guests, uh, White Cane is two months away. We've received notice. We, we will be at the Walmart stores, one door opening only at both uh, 7th Avenue and, and uh, Ocean Beach Highway. I'm working with Kirby Key to see if we have any more volunteers. They, they have been able to get more store fronts and have less people. So we may have, if we can man them, we can have another fund. Our goal is to raise $2,000. Last year we came pretty close. Jane Jordan has helped us quite a bit by once a month when you guys all do the raffle for the goodies, that money goes in the pot and it's, uh, it's, it's a fair amount of money already that Jane has, has risen and raised for that. So. <laughs> my, I suggest you buy it's less exactly goodies. Exactly spirit of <laughs> At any rate, people forget what White Cane is about. It was one of the early fundraisers that we started in the United States as an international club. And it pays for a lot of the expenses of the uh, people in Seattle and then the, and, and, you know, and it is expensive to run. But a lot of that money goes out to people that have hearing and vision problems. So White Cane is a very important integral part of our history of the club, so please support it when we get the sign-up sheets going to another so. Part, Pardon me, but uh, President Ron, I heard two or three people say they can't attend more than one meeting after the meeting. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just do my meeting right now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Make it fast. So all of you people who just think about playing this year, please stand up. Every one of you. If you if you've never played and you think you might play, play anyway. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen people. Alright, now here's the and stay standing. Here's the proposal. To try and to try and make the the uh, poor players, which we have a lot of, have a better chance of winning. We've done several things, but the proposal is to make the new rule that says that everybody who is over 70 years old would play from the gold tees, the forward tees. Then the ladies, it's that would be the red tees. And everybody who has a handicap under 10 would play from the blue tees. All right. So, <laughs> that's the proposal. Now, the question is, if you disagree with that proposal, please sit down. I think there's one person that sat down, so. Let's move on. Phil Olson has an announcement. President Ron, fellow Lions and guests, this Friday night you have a unique opportunity, and it is truly unique. You can see some excellent spelling from Pat Palmer, or Greg Swanson, or, oh, me. And we will be facing the audience. And the group that has the most uh, volatile support gets a prize. Now, if, if hearing good spelling isn't your thing, you can also spend two hours looking at the back of Lion George Rader's head, because he is one of the judges. So I'm pretty sure that would inspire almost anybody. Spelling the name. Lion King. So I asked yourself some questions. Do you like supporting charitable efforts in the community? Do you enjoy seeing friendly competition? Yes. Do you like beer? Yes. Pizza? Yes. Do you care who you hang out with very much? Uh, okay. <laughs> so you answered them all right. Come on to this fun, baby. A lot of fun. Yeah. And because of my past tattoo in the community, I cannot be bribed easily. <laughs> he, took, he took my money, but... Yeah. Rush Case has an announcement. Yeah. Let's have a little order here, please. Oh, just a little. I've been asked by Laura, the 
real second vice president as compared to the first vice president that I was inappropriately introduced to well, as early. Sitting there. I'm sitting at, what does this say? Doesn't matter what it says. Okay, all right. But anyway, uh, and I'm taken away from Ron here. Yeah. Laura would ask me to remind everybody about that she's still looking for people for chair and co-chair, and we've got several of them done this after this evening, this morning. So if you need an app, a form to fill out, just come on up here and I'll give you one. So just to kind of remind you that we're still working on chairs and co-chairs. Thank you. That's it. There's no more announcements. I'll turn it over to uh, John Morelli. Thank you. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, you guys are gonna have to suffer through. I'm the chair of. I'm the program chair this month, so you're gonna have to suffer through a lot of things. But you won't have to suffer through anything today. Um, I'm delighted. Uh, you know more about Julie Reinard than I do because you've known her longer than I have. Uh, Julie has been with Community Home Health and Hospice for, uh, oh, as long as I've been here, so for probably eight years, seven or eight years or so. And she's gonna share some things about hospice. We all know uh, about hospice. It's one of the uh, oldest um, hospice agencies in the country, uh, started back uh, in the 70s. And uh, it's been uh, affected all of our lives at one point or another. So I want to take some time to introduce Julie and President Ron, fellow Lions and guests, Julie Reiner from Community Home Health and Hospice. Thank you, John. I think he has some inside knowledge about the agency. What do you think? <laughs> I, I appreciate this group very much, and I'm a third generation Longy girl, so my memories of this club go way back to as a little tiny kid enjoying those Christmas lights. And I just want to say thank you for keeping that going. It's got to be a huge amount of work and expense, and the community loves it. And I, I think you know that, but I just wanted to share that too. I, I've got a lot of materials on the table over here. I'm not going to pass them around while we're seated, but if anything is of interest to you during my short talk here, please feel free to, to take whatever you want from the table, and, and I'll stand by to answer questions too. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask um, if any of you would like to take a wild guess how many employees we have at Community Home Health and Hospice. Just throw out a number. Who thinks they know? 37. Okay, I heard 37. I heard 58. 40, 58. 85. More. Okay, we're getting closer. 250. 250. And. I can tell you we have almost as many volunteers. The employee number of 250 is full-time equivalent. We have about 200 volunteers. Some are one hour a week, some are full-time, so that varies. But that is the number of people it takes to keep things going. We cannot uh, do our work without volunteers. And I know some of you have volunteered, so I want to thank you for that. Uh, we take care of almost 600 patients per day, year-round and it is a great honor. We have almost 4,000 patients a year. So that's a lot of folks. How many of you are familiar in some way with the Hospice Care Center in Longview? Okay, you, okay thank you for that. Um, did you know that that's a 12-bed care center that started with just four, and it was a vision of Lorraine Burnt. She's still with us. Her name comes up every day. She's been retired for a number of years, but her vision is alive, and we've expanded the care center many times, but knowing that it is uh, 12 beds, um, can you imagine how many people were, were visiting in their homes? And it's all across four counties now, so we're talking about, um, there's a place called Birkenfeld. Have you heard? Birkenfeld, okay. Some very remote communities that we travel to with our our nurses, our CNAs, bath aides, physical therapy, speech therapy, we have our physicians as well. So it's a, it's a great honor to do this, but I wanted to point out that we may have some programs that you might not be familiar with, and then I'll go into some very new things. But we do home care. Home care is different from hospice. Home care is not necessarily ordered by a physician. We might be helping someone bathe, cook meals, run errands, take care of their yard. 
help them get from their bed to their chair, that sort of thing. So we're taking care of them in their home. We also do a, a service called Home Health, and this is ordered by a physician. And many times we're taking care of people who have been in the hospital and they're going home, and they're very happy to be going home. And we are making a difference for them with maybe avoiding extra office calls with their physician because our um, medical staff can go and, and see them in their home. And when I use the word home, I mean anywhere someone may live. So we are in places like Canterbury Gardens, Canterbury Inn, Delaware Plaza, um, Crawford House, assisted living, adult family homes every day. And we, we work in tandem with the staff in those buildings and we, we bring our services to people wherever they live. Sometimes, of course, that means uh, things change and there's a decision made about going to hospice and a hospice isn't a place, so I want to clarify that. Hospice is a type of care and it's a generic term. So when you talk about going to hospice, sometimes I think, hmm, I wonder what they mean, going to hospice. We bring hospice to the person or the patient comes to our hospice care center. But we are an independent, um, nonprofit, community-based organization. We were established in 1977, and John was right, one of the first in the country. So we're, we're very um, happy with the support that we've had from this community over many, many years. And we do have an office in Vancouver, and we are building a new care center in the Salmon Creek area. And it's based on a huge need in the community for inpatient care. We've been taking care of people in their homes in Clark County for almost 25 years. So it's time and we're happy to be able to do that. Um, we have, um, we, we were the first freestanding hospice care center. I don't know if any of you remember back in 77 when it was new. I was a little younger then. I know you weren't, right? Um, I was, um, that was, I was in high school and I remember that. And I remember wondering, wondering what it was and I was afraid of it. And I remember many, many years later, a very dear friend was in the hospital and then she was in a skilled nursing facility and then she was in a hospice care center. And I was not afraid to see her in the hospital and I was not afraid to see her in the skilled nursing facility, but I was afraid to go to hospice care center. And when I arrived, I, I, I really didn't know what to say, what to do, what to expect. And when I got into her room and it looked like a beautiful bedroom and she was smiling, and she had a pretty little wig, somebody had taken care of her appearance and she felt good. And she was actively dying, but she felt good. And she smiled and her family was there and they were comforted. I, would, I was transformed and I was a supporter after that. 10 years later, I went to work for the agency. So I'm really pleased to be part of that. I wanted to share with you and especially Pat, Ron and Phil. You may be interested to know that we have a program called Pet Peace of Mind. Pet Peace of Mind is where we go in and we take care of the pets that belong to our hospice patients. So they do not have to give them up. And what that means is, if they are bedridden and they cannot move and they cannot feed their pet, they cannot take it out, take it to the vet, um, we do that for them. And so they, they get to remain with their beloved pet until they're gone. And if that means we're going to pick the pet up and lay the pet on their bed, pet them, whatever it takes, we're very happy to be able to do that. That's called Pet Peace of Mind. And we make sure that they have a forever home after that, too. So we have a relationship with the Humane Society and their um, foster volunteers. So those pets don't go into a homeless situation. And sometimes, I have to admit, the nurse adopts the pet. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, a sweet thing that happens, but you know how bonding happens when you meet a pet and you take care of it and it needs a home. Well, I haven't done that yet, but I'm not a nurse and it, I have to watch out because I, I fall in love with all those pets too, as some people know. So um, for today, I wanted to touch briefly on two new things that are very special for the community and not just hospice families. This goes beyond community home health and hospice. The first one is our James Avery Center for Grief Support. And I have brochures here about this, but the Grief Support Center was made possible through a donation. 
and most things that you see and hear about that I'm talking about were made possible from donations. And the great, the James Avery Center was opened and redesigned. It's been many different things. Um, if you're familiar with the location, it's on 12th Avenue, 1000 is the address, and it's right across the alley from the Hospice Care Center building. You may have remembered it's been CPAs. It's been, uh, we, we've gone to have uh, for dental appointments there. Uh, we've um, gone to see attorneys there. It's been many, many different purposes. Um, most recently, before we remodeled it, it was our own community daycare. It was full of children. And it was a wonderful, thriving thing that we were able to do, but it was not self-supporting financially, and we had to take a long, hard look at that. And uh, Mr. Avery passed away, and before he did, he was in our care. He asked us what we were doing with children who are grieving, because there are many, many um, grieving children in our community. And we told them, and we told them that we have a camp for them, and they're among their peers, and we, we teach them how to work through their grief and their sadness. And he visited the camp, and he decided he wanted to help that. So he, when he passed away, he gave us his home. And he had told us that as long as it benefited other families, we could do whatever we wanted. And it was not an appropriate place for meetings, so we sold it and we used the money to make this beautiful grief support center. And there are special places for the children and the teens and the adults and for the community. So any type of loss that anyone may be dealing with, you, you can come to us and we will help you. And it could be a suicide, a drug overdose, a terrible accident, it could be hospice, it could be any type of loss at any point in your life, and it could have been a loss from many years prior. And this is the work that we're doing that is, is so inspiring for us, especially with the children. There isn't another place for children who are grieving, and we take care of children as little as five who may not have anyone left in their life. So I have a little bit of information about that here. There's a special brochure just about our grief support services, and it's all free, no charge ever. So it's peer-based. Um, people will be with others who are their same age or similar age. And for the adults, uh, the program has grown so much since we opened this building. It's grown over 40%. So what we're seeing is all of these, these new people that we're helping um, or just hearing about it because now we finally have a building to take care of them and there's more, more need. So we're happy to do that. We've expanded the groups to um, make um, smaller groups again, like 12 or fewer people. And it could be people who have a similar type of loss. So we have young mothers who've lost a husband in their group separate from the 80-year-old uh, widows and that sort of thing. That, that's more helpful to them. Um, we also have a beautiful new memorial garden and I have some pictures in a little album. This is not a high-tech presentation, as you can tell. I brought everything in a plastic basket, and there's a little photo album with printed photos and pages, okay? So um, feel free to take a peek at that. It's, uh, it used to be a, a parking lot, and then it was a playground, and then it was a pile of dirt, and now it's a beautiful memorial garden, and we opened it about a year ago. And it was made possible through a generous donation from Ken Henderson, he gave us the seed money, literally, seeds went into the garden. And um, we are very pleased with other generous donations. We found out over all these years, the fence was over on Clary's property by three feet. And we had to do something about that or make our garden smaller. And they're very generous and gave us those three feet, so we didn't have to make our garden smaller. Uh, we have a fence around it, so when you're driving by, um, you may not even notice that there's a beautiful garden inside. And sometimes I've gone on to the second floor in the building right beside it and looked down right at dusk, and I've seen something special. It's like a snow globe. There's, there's, um, there's razor wire, and there are dumpsters, and speeding cars, and yelling, and, and you know, what happens in a place like around this fence isn't so peaceful and serene. But inside the, the parameter of this garden, it's beautiful and, and peaceful, and we have music, and we have water features, and it, it was all given. And it was put together over a whole year. If you can imagine, 3,000 square foot garden took a year to do it. Well, it's because we were welcoming volunteers and staff and the time it took to do it. Let's just enjoy the process. So we did. And of course, we redesigned it a million times too, but 
thanks to Nancy Chanel, uh, we have a design that works, and we're very happy with that. Um, I, there are um, so a couple of bridges there, and when you come to visit, and I hope you do, um, I want you to think, if you can, remember about the bridges. There's something very special that was happening as we were in construction. I would come in, like on a Monday, to just see how things were going, and there had been progress, but yet the garden was all locked up. Um, more plantings, or more of the structure had been completed, but yet we weren't there, and we hadn't been aware of any volunteers, so I wasn't quite sure what was going on. And then I found out that one of the subcontractors um, was involved in volunteering and getting some work done over the weekends. And in, in particular, his 14-year-old daughter had decided she wanted to do something in memory of her grandma who died on hospice. And when I say on hospice, I mean she had hospice care. She did not live in this area, but her teenage granddaughter was grieving and wanted to do something as she remembered her grandma. And she, 14-year-old girl, was pounding nails and working on this bridge in her dad's garage. And it helped her. And when it was installed, it was beautiful, and it meant something to her. And she came to our grand opening, and she's very quiet. I wanted to thank her. She's kind of shy. And she told me what it meant. And I knew, it, it just it was profound, that this garden was helping people. It was already helping people before it was even done, and that was our goal. So we're very, very happy with that, and love to invite you anytime. It's posted with hours, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, but that just means that's when it's unlocked. You can visit any time, and you can have a, a gathering of your family and friends. You can remember someone you've lost or just bring a little sack lunch. But check into the care center and say, hey, I want to get into the garden. If it's after hours, no problem. We're just trying to control any possible problems, and we haven't had any. And you know, we're happy to play music for you and welcome your group. Um, you could even come in as a group here and just walk through. It's for everyone. It's not just for hospice families. So this is what people need, and we're very, very happy to be able to do it. Um, I've got um, lots of um, materials for you, and I can answer questions. I am probably out of time. Oh, yes. I do? Okay. Um, I guess the, the underlying message here is it takes a community, and we're, we're honored to take care of the community, and we're also very honored that this community provides the support that we need to keep going, because we hope that in the future, um, we can continue to offer, especially hospice care, for no charge. We don't charge anybody for hospice care. And we are in a situation where we provide about $700,000 worth of care per year un un re unreversed. So that means we find funding for $700,000 worth of care for this community. And we're hoping that we can always do that. And I have um, one little card out there. We, we do one fundraiser a year, just one. It's on May 1st this year. And this is what the card looks like sitting over there. It's specifically for charity care, which is our area greatest need. So if you come out and support that event, I can tell you that's what you're supporting specifically for our agency. And last year we raised $115,000. We were just blown away. But even more importantly, our net that actually went directly to charity care was 95000 And the reason for that is this community, with the support that we got, the in-kind gifts, the free desserts, all those things. So we're very, very grateful, and I hope that you walk away with knowing that you appreciate it very much. Watch out, Ron. He just said I have more time if I need it. He doesn't know that I can just go on forever. So if anyone has a question that you would like me to answer, I'd, I'd take a minute to do that. Otherwise, one-on-one -on -one at the table afterwards. I'm happy with that, too. Meryl. Oh, I, I see one. OK. <gasps> oh, my goodness, yes. Yes. Threshold choir. Yes. Well, I. It's a very special group of, I believe they're all women. They sing a cappella. Yes, I know several of them. They have beautiful voices. They practiced for a solid year before they felt like they were ready. And when they were ready, they come by invitation and sing to hospice patients. 
in their rooms at the Hospice Care Center. It's moving, yes. And I hear from families about what it meant to them. And they write their own songs, too. They're specifically for what they call the, the threshold. Yeah. Very tender. Mm-hmm. Was there another hand off this direction, maybe? Does someone have the answers? No questions? I want some answers. All right. Thank you. Julie, on behalf of the Pioneer Alliance, I'd like to present you with this here mug and an application to join our club. <laughs> A reminder of uh, the, the announcements, Greg Firth wants you to get your health cards, visitations coming up, past president's meeting, tasteabilities coming up, need more wine, go forth buttons, past president's meeting, where's that going to be at Doug? It's going to be at the Cherry's restaurant. Oh, okay. That's uh, Terry's or something like that now? Yeah. And we got the golf coming up. White cane. And the spell celebration. Pat will tell you more. Okay. Friday, March 6th, Kelsey Theater Club, be there. Okay. At seven. A blue ticket. Blue ticket seven two zero. Seven four eight. Red ticket, 817342. Relay for life ticket. All right. Senility. Pat Palmer forgot to sign in. And Laura Yoder forgot to sign in. Yeah. Well, there's no other business. This meeting's adjourned.